Hello everyone, my name is Samantha and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar, ECB Trace Termination Techniques to Ensure Signal Integrity. Thank you all for joining us for today's event and introduce you to our presenters, Amit Ball and Ernie Froering. Amit has been in the PCB industry for 20 plus years. He is the Chief Revenue Officer at Sierra Circuits. His passion is to empower tech companies to achieve their visions and change the world. Rockets going into space, self-driving cars taking up the streets, cancer fighting medical devices, protecting the country, he's ready to build any circuit board. Ernie began his career in electronic design and instrumentation, specializing in emulators and logic analyzers. Since then, he has leveraged his knowledge of hardware instrumentation to become experienced in the software tools used for electronic design. He has worked with various PCB layout, schematic capture, analog simulation, and signal integrity analysis tools, and is especially interested in the integration of these tools into a design environment. He is currently specializing in RF and digital simulation, doing presentations, and working one-on-one -on -one with customers using the ED EDA tools from Cadence and EMA Design Automation. He graduated from Massachusetts Institute of Technology with a bachelor's and master's degree in electrical engineering. Amit will now start the webinar with information on today's topic. Assuming we have time at the end, we'll field some questions in a formal Q&A. Thank you all for your attention. And now over to you, Amit. Uh, thanks, uh, Samantha. I, yeah, I, we encourage questions. So please ask questions. And uh, I know there's going to be a good time for that uh, here today. So um, ask away. And so today uh, we're talking about, you know, different types of terminations, why you need to do uh, terminations, you know, all of that. Um, and then at the end, there'll be, during the webinar, there'll be some demos of tools that Sierra has. And at the end, you know, there'll be a demo within uh, your design tool of uh, important techniques as well. So it's, we have a good uh, presentation for everyone. So the reasons to terminate PCB traces, um, you know, for the seamless signal transmission, maintaining impedance uniformity across the source, trace, and load. Um, these, are, these are good reasons to terminate. And then if the condition is not satisfied, you could have signal reflections. And to balance this out, you want to place termination resistors along the trace at the source or the load end. And uh, on our newly launched discussion forum, um, Eric Bogatin, another expert in the field, you know, made a comment in, in one of our Ask Me Anythings. Um, you know, to avoid terminations, he gave a rule of thumb, uh, which is listed here. So, you know, the unterminated end of a transmission line causes abrupt impedance discontinuity and propagation delay, leading to jitter, ringing, and signal distortion. And the waveform here shows, clearly shows the presence of uh, jitter and ringing. So here uh, in this schematic, the driver impedance, uh, Z sub trace is the line impedance and Z sub load is the load impedance. You can calculate the reflection coefficients you know, using these formulas. Uh, the reflection coefficient ranges between zero and one. If the reflection coefficient is equal to zero, it indicates a perfect match between the transmission line and impedance and connected components. If the reflection coefficient is equal to one, it signifies total reflection, if the value is between zero and one, it's a partial reflection. If the phase angle of the reflection coefficient is zero or 180 overshooting occurs if the angle is 90 degrees undershooting occurs. So we have a calculator that visually illustrates ringing. Uh, so I think Lucy will demo that today. Transmission line and reflection calculator. This tool gives a visual idea of how the voltage is varied at input and output end. 
on a matched impedance it will show no ringing and on an unmatched impedance the tool will show graphs with ringing due to multiple reflection a transmission line should have uniform impedance and terminate with the same impedance for minimum reflection at the load end any discontinuity or non uniformity will lead to reflection the input parameters for this tool are source impedance line impedance signal launch step voltage and total propagation as the name suggests source and load impedance are the impedances at the source end and at the load end of the transmission line the line impedance is the impedance of the transmission line the signal launch step voltage is the voltage of the signal at the total propagation delay time is the time needed for the signal to reach source impedance is 16.67 line impedance is 50 ohms load impedance is 150 ohms signal on step voltage is 1 volt and total propagation time is 2 nanoseconds quick calculate to see the graph of voltage and time at source end and at the load end of the transmission line the red curve shows the voltage at the source end and the green curve shows how the voltage will be at the output end of the transmission line quick show calculations to see the table with voltages at different intervals so we're going to talk about uh, series trace terminations right now so series trace terminations involve placing a terminating resistor between the driver and the transmission line and the resistor is placed as close to the driver's side as possible and its value is chosen so the combined impedance of the resistor and driver matches the trace impedance so in order in this case the driver is 23 ohms and the line impedance is 50 ohms you must implement a series resistor 27 ohms near the near the driver end the reflection coefficient coefficient will be zero so every type of Termination has its pros and cons. So here, series termination resistor provides a good noise margin with low power consumption. It requires a single resistor that can easily be integrated into the PCB layout. And in terms of the con, the additional series resistor slightly delays the signal propagation uh, time. So how, again, how to choose the series terminate, termination terminating resistor values. Uh, we can see the oscilloscope waveforms with different series termination resistors. Assume the driver impedance is 23 ohms and the line impedance is 50 ohms. To match these impedances, four series termination resistors are incorporated with the values of 10, 22, 33, and 47. If the sum of the driver and termination impedance exceeds the line impedance, it will cause overshooting, as you can see in the waveform for 10 and 22 ohm resistors. If the total impedance of the driver and termination resistor is higher than the line impedance, it results in undershooting in the waveform. And if the driver impedance um, is closer to the target of 50 ohms is the last example. So always choose a termination resistor that balances driver and line impedances to minimize overshooting and undershooting. Series resistors work as damping resistors. So a series resistor helps achieve a critically damp state in the signal transmission and reach the fastest settling time without overshoot or oscillation. These resistors usually have values below 100 ohms ensuring the signal reaches the desired logic level smoothly. In this process, you can employ the resistor inductor capacitor model to calculate the transient oscillation frequency and damping. By knowing the load capacitance and inductance, you can precisely calculate the value of the series terminization resistor needed to achieve critical damping. Next, we have the parallel trace termination. Parallel traced termination involves placing a shunt resistor in the parallel with the receiver. This matching resistor absorbs all reflections at the far end of the transmission line. The resistor should be close to the receiver for better results. The termination, the termination resistor's value must match the termination line's impedance. The parallel resistor is connected either to VCC or ground depending on IC's internal circuitry. Uh, pros and cons of parallel Termination pros, unlike series termination, termination resistors, parallel termination does not introduce any additional time delay and change in signal rise time, thus reduces the propagation delay. 
And it's well suited for data chain topologies where multiple devices such as DDR are connected in series aligned sig single signal trace. And then the con is the shunt termination, termination incurs higher power consumption than the series termination. So in this waveform comparison, the initial display reveals instances of both overshooting and undershooting. And in the second waveform, which is parallel termination, it shows a notable absence of significant reflections, presenting a more stable signal profile. Then we have a Thevenin's termination. This technique uses Thevenin's equivalent circuit at the load end to terminate the transmission line. This equivalent circuit typically comprises two resistors parallel to the signal trace and the voltage source. The values of the resistors are chosen such that the impedance of the equivalent circuit is equal to the trace impedance. And the source voltage is equal to the voltage at the non-terminated line. So pros and cons. This, this termination the strategy provides less signal attenuation without any timing delay. It allows for level adaptation, enabling the adjustment of signal levels between different circuit stages. And it does have some drawbacks compared to other termination methods. Um, routing involves a little bit more power and higher cost due to the additional resistors engaged in the circuit. And it also increases the space occupied by the termination circuitry. Then we have AC trace termination, which is achieved by introducing a pack capacitor in series with a parallel terminating resistor. It reduces the power dissipation problems of parallel termination strategies, it, and it provides effective termination over a broader frequency range than fixed resistors used in DC termination. And the technique can adapt to dynamic changes in the signal voltage levels and is well suited for applications with varying data rates. Uh, so it consumes more power and is sensitive to component value and tolerance variations. So bidirectional trace termination, it's, it's an extension of the parallel termination uh, for multipoint applications. So bidirectional termination allows multipoint and two-directional communication on the same trace. However, only half duplex transmission is permitted. Termination resistors are placed at the extreme ends of the line to minimize stub lengths. The value should match the signal line characteristic impedance. Here, two termination resistors double the driver load, hence the driver current and power dissipation increase. However, the noise margin reduces as the driver output level decreases. And depending on the complexity is generally implemented in high speed uh, PCB designs. So methods to terminate a differential pair, differential series termination, a resistor is placed in series with each line of the differential pair close to the driver end. It minimizes the driver's power dissipation. Differential parallel termination, a resistor is added parallel to the lines. Parallel termination addresses all differential reflections, but doesn't eliminate common mode reflections. Increases, and it increases drive current and might create trace stubs. Differential AC termination combines a resistor and capacitor in series at the end of each trace in the differential pair. And this approach reduces the DC current loop and drives power dissipation and is suitable for low speed control lines. Impedance matching using transformers. So transformers uh, serve as an essential component to align the impedance of the source with the load. They operate across a wide range of frequencies and can alter voltage levels without affecting system power. Here's the formula to calculate the matching transformer's turn ratio. To ensure impedance matching, introduce a matching transformer, such as an iron core transformer, with an appropriate turn ratio between the source and the load. A lower voltage side with fewer turns signifies lower impedance. A higher voltage side with more turns corresponds to higher impedance. So impedance matching in high-speed PCBs. Uh, what determines the impedance of a PCB? So the following factors determine the impedance of your designs. Wider traces result in lower impedance. Impedance is inversely proportional to the square root of the laminous dielectric constant. 
smaller the distance between the signal trace and the reference plane, lower the impedance. Layer number, order, and the presence of power planes impact the impedance. And thicker copper layers lower the impedance. We also have a Cirrus Circuits impedance calculator to demo, uh, all which are free on our website. This is our impedance calculator tool. It is based on 2D numerical solutions of Maxwell's equation. So it's very accurate and the results can be used for both manufacturing and engineering analysis. On the home page, you will see options to select structures like quote, uncoated microstrip, coated microstrip, embedded microstrip, and strip line. And select a desired model such as single ended, differential pair, and co -pinar. And we also have co pinar single ended, co pinar differential pair. We also have without ground models for single co pinar single ended and co pinar differential pair. For a selected model and a selected geometry, you will see all the calculators that are available with that selection. So for example, I have selected coated microstrip and a differential pair. You see, you have two calculators here. One is a simple model and one is a composite dielectric model where there are multiple dielectrics between the trace and the reference. So we have a total of 82 different geometries. I think something's going on on my end with the recording. Unmuted. The calculator. Oh, sorry. So for example, I've selected coated microstrip and a differential pair. You see, you have two calculators here. One is a simple model and one is a composite dielectric model where there are multiple dielectrics between the trace and the reference. So we have a total of 82 different geometries in this calculator. With both simple and composite geometries. For a single ended model, we calculate and display impedance, propagation delay, inductance, capacitance of the trace, and effective dielectric constant of the geometry. And for a differential pair model, we calculate and display differential impedance, coupling coefficient. We also calculate and display odd mode and even mode values of impedance, propagation delays, effective dielectric constant, etc. To open the desired model, click on the open button and it will open the calculator. In the calculator, you'll see the different tabs for different tools that we have inside this calculator. We have a signal loss calculator, S parameter, and crosstalk for the geometry, along with the impedance calculator. So you need to do the impedance calculation first before going towards any of these other tools. <clears throat> Below, you'll see the geometry information with the image of the geometry, and You'll see the unit selection drop down wherein you can select metric unit as well as empirical units. The default unit is mills. Then you need to enter the dielectric information where you need to enter the dielectric height and dielectric constant of the dielectrics that are present in the geometry. So if there are multiple, you'll have to, you'll have to enter multiple heights and multiple dielectric constant for each respective geometry. You need to enter coating height and coating dielectric constant for this geometry as this is a coated microstrip. Next is the trace information where you need to enter trace parameters like trace thicknesses, trace separation. You need to enter a parameter called as delta W, which is the difference between the bottom of the trace width and the top of the trace width. This parameter is needed because the trace is not of a rectangular shape, but it has a trapezoidal shape. If you don't know what value to enter, you can click on the help button and it will open up a table where which will give what delta value you should choose for that particular starting copper. Now in the calculator, you can either enter the target impedance and calculate the trace weight or enter a trace weight and calculate the impedance. Suppose I need a 90 ohm differential pair, I'll enter 90 and I'll calculate the trace weight. So press the calculate W button and it will give me a trace width. So to achieve a 90 ohm, I need this trace and this much separation. 
I can adjust this value to a suitable number and redo the calculation. So these are the other parameters which are calculated. Now let's look at some other impedance calculator. Let's take strip line and say single ended. So here you will see a simple geometry and a composite models with multiple dielectrics between the trace and the reference plane. Click on open and it will open the impedance, the selected impedance calculator. Now in the strip line model, you have two dielectrics. So you need to enter the dielectric height H1 and H2 as well as the respective dielectric constants. Delta W trace thickness. Say I need a single ended impedance of 50 ohms. Enter 50 and calculate W. This will calculate the trace width. Also, I can change the trace width and do the calculations again. And we also have propagation delay, inductance, capacitance, and effective dielectric constant. This is available for all the geometries. Okay, back to you, Amis. PCB stack of design with controlled impedance. Consider the following parameters to achieve the desired target impedance. An increase in the dielectric thickness raises the impedance value. The lower the dielectric constant, the higher the impedance. The thicker the copper weight lowers the impedance. And trace inductance is directly proportional to impedance. And trace capacitance is indirectly proportional uh, to impedance. So here's an example of an eight layer stack up with controlled impedance requirements. And this is how you could uh, put it onto your fab drawing. Uh, to calculate the values, uh, you need to know the layer counts, uh, layers on which controlled impedance traces should be routed, reference layers, PCB materials to be used, and copper thicknesses, uh, dielectric uh, constant and dielectric height, impedance tolerance generally 5 to 10 percent. 5 percent is non-standard, 10 percent is more standard. So here's a quick case study for termination routing in multiple DDRs connected to an FPGA. So in this design, the four DDR3s are connected uh, to the memory controller. Here the controller is an FPGA and each DDR has two data sets and each set has 11 lines. The, the design consists of 25 address lines and 10 command and control lines. Those are listed below. So the DDR3 SD RAM uses a flyby typology where each DDR chip is connected to the FPGA memory controller in a daisy chain fashion. This configuration has a total of 34 termination, termination resistors, uh, 25 for the address lines and nine for command control lines. The DDR data sheet specifies a nominal termination, termination resistor value of 36 ohms we have selected 35.7 ohm resistors as the optimal choice for our design. So it was challenging to place termination, termination resistors due to the large size of the components. So termination resistors were positioned at each DDR's end using vias. Unfortunately, this approach resulted in undesired trace steps causing signal reflections. So our solution was to minimize the trace stubs our designers implemented to minimize the trace stubs our designers implemented shunt pull up termination resistors at the end of the last uh, DDR. So I think we're ready for a walkthrough or demo and be before uh, before we go there's going to be some you know additional resources for you to explore as well. Thank you Amat. Now over to Ernie. Okay, hey, hello. Okay, so what I'm showing you here is this is a this is a layout tool, the uh, Ocad Allegro layout tool from Cadence, and we have a tool called Aurora. And what Aurora is is a tool that allows you to do signal integrity analysis directly in the layout tool. That has the advantage of being able to, for PCB engineers to be able to run some basic checks and fix the results before you ever have to send a design on to some signal integrity expert. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set it up for simulation by setting up the default models. Okay, what the default model allows me to do is to choose which model I'm gonna use when I do my analysis. So in this case, I'm picking a 1.2 volt 33 ohm, I'm talking about the terminations, 
one pico flared bidirectional interface. So then what I can do is I can take any one of the traces. So for example, I'm going to go into here and here you can see the range of checks that I could run directly in the layout tool here with the Aurora tool. I'm going to go into topology extraction work for it. This allows me to go in and select a particular net that I'm going to do the analysis of. And I'm going to address the, the DQ, which are the bi-directional traces. And so I'll choose one of those. Here, here we go. Here's two DQ nine. Let's do that one. And I say, okay. Now what I've done is I've finished my checklist, okay, of, set, of setting up my design. And now I can go in and do the extraction. What the extraction does is it takes a particular trace and it takes that trace and analyzes all the elements within that trace and gives me a sort of a, uh, a schematic representation of what the trace looks like. And you'll see it opening up right here. So let me go back here and show you what that 3D geometry is. This particular trace, we have a via, in other words, the component is on the top layer of the board and then the trace is on the inner layer. Notice, by the way, that this via is a through via. It's actually, it actually goes through all the layers that you're dealing with. That may not be the optimal design technique for, um, for the vias, and we may go into via design in a future webinar. So let's go back to here. You can see here what I have is a driver or receiver. This is on the FPGA side, which goes into a short piece of trace, which goes into that via that you saw in the, in the uh, layout that I was displaying. Then goes to that longer trace in internal to the board, and to a three yet to a short trace, and then to the um, memory chip. Now, since this is bi-directional, right, I can either do any driving from left to right, or I can do driving from right to left. So that means I have a problem if I want to use series termination because the series termination is supposed to be next to the closest design. To. So here, so for example, if I was doing a driver, I would want my resistor to be very close to my driver and then go through the trace and then go into the receiver. If I'm going the other way in the driver, I would want the resistor to be on the other side of the trace and go into the receiver. The way that we accomplish this is by taking the termination resistor and putting it on the die and making it programmable. So when I'm actually going in DDR and I'm driving this particular signal here, I program this resistor to turn on as a termination resistor, go through the trace and then go to the receiver. If I'm doing it the other way, I then program this trace, turn off the one on the, on the receiver side, turn on the one on the driver's side, go through the trace and go to the receiver. Let's take a look at what those results look like. I've got my signal here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a transient analysis. Oh, it's telling me, by the way, that I haven't set up my driver. This tree needs to be my driver. I set the, make that the transmitter signal, and then I go in and I do my transient analysis. Now, notice that this is using that 33 ohm a resistance that I use for my default model. Let me go in now and just sort of zoom in on a, on a portion of this so I can look at this, this, this part of the signal. So now you see, this is what the signal looks like at the receiver. It's got a little bit of overshoot, but it's actually pretty good. So that 33 ohm seems to be fairly good model. If I go in and look at the transmission line side, you'll see that here, the transmission line, the voltage goes to a little bit above six tenths of a volt. That's because of that termination resistor. The termination resistor means that the voltage is divided between the resistor and the actual circuit. It then goes over to here, and then, then when it hits the receiver, the receiver is high impedance. So as was explained to you, the impedance mismatch basically doubles the voltage because of the reflection coefficient. And then when that signal gets back to the driver, then the driver finally goes up to its final value. And then the process is repeated on this side with the receiver, the, the um, 
driver going to half the level of voltage and then going to the full level of voltage after the signal was signal was um, sent back. I'm going to go and I'm going to I'm going to change this to be a generic driver. So I go into my signal here and I go pick a driver and I add that onto the design like this. And then I'm going to wire it back in. So now I'm going to set this up as a driver as I did before. I'm going to choose a different model for it. And I go in and I say make uh, add library browsing. So instead of using the default 33 ohm model that I use, I'm going to go and I'm going to try a 22 ohm model to see what the effects are. When I go ahead with the 22 ohm resistor and start my transient analysis, okay, what you'll see is that the overshoot has become much worse on the receiver signal. And if I go into here and look at the transmit, you'll see why. Now, because the resistor is smaller, it turns out that eight tenths of a volt was the level on the transmission line after it goes through the goes through the resistor, and therefore that eight tenths of a volt got doubled when it when it reached the the uh, reflection coefficient on the receiver. So you can see the signal here is much worse than it would have been if I look. So let me go in and just show you result one. Okay, so that was result one. You could see that the signal was not nearly as much of an overshoot, and you could see again that the impedance was the, um, the level of the driver was about half before it went on to the full input. Well, I've got still got a little bit overshoot in this signal, so let me try something different here. Let me go in with my I/O model and library browser and this time choose a 40 ohm choose an even a larger resistor than i used before select that model go and do my transient analysis and you'll see here there's a little bit of a, a ringing to here it goes down to one bowl but this looks like it would be satisfied the, the criteria as well and i can go in and look at the uh at the transmission line Okay, so you can see that the voltage here is much closer to six tenths of a volt after it goes through the 40 ohm resistor. And that's why I'm getting better in here. And just to show you the results from before, okay, let me do it individually so you can see it. Okay, here was the receiver signal. Okay, so you can see that we've improved it even more in terms of the overshoot and the design. And of course, then my transmitter signal before was slightly above six cents of the volt. And so that's why I was running into that. So I hope this is giving you a little idea of what the, the signals actually look like when we're doing this kind of ter termination and how we can really help uh, the design by being, used, uh, being able to use on die termination so that they're programmable and also so they don't take up an extra component in the design. Okay. I think I'll pass it back to Samantha. Yes, thank you, Ernie. And let's move on to the Q&A. Please enter any questions you have into the questions panel now. Uh, the first question we have is, is Sierra circuits compatible import and export with ORCAD and or KiCAD? I can take that one, yes. Yeah, so Sierra, our tools do uh, are compatible um, with the 2581 format, uh, and we also have uh, stack ups for KiCad. Uh, so, yes. Are PCB termination required for low slipping frequency PMIC PCB design, or it's mainly used for high speed serial link circuits GHZ range? Okay, I think I'll take that one. Uh, it's got to do with low frequency versus high frequency. It usually has to do with the wavelength of the signal. The way that I like to think of it is if the wavelength of the signal is small compared to the structures on the board, then you need it's considered high frequency and you have to uh, take into account the, the uh, system. That means that smaller circuit boards uh, would require termination at lower frequencies. Uh, one one way to think of it is the fact that uh, on a printed circuit board, uh, the speed of light is about half. It's 
a nanosecond, a gigahertz nanosecond. So um, if the rule of thumb is usually a six. So in other words, if you have a you have a uh, structure which is a sixth of the size size of the uh, structure you're dealing with, then you do have to do termination because it then follows the transmission line rules. If it's low enough frequency so that the voltages on the board effectively change, don't change that much from one side of the board or one side of the trace to the other, then you don't need termination. And by the way, our determination checks are included in many of the tools that both ORCAD and Cadence have for just for layout. Thank you. Um, next question we have is which termination is the least power consuming? Um, the least power consuming would be like the series resistance terminations because they are only only dissipate power when the signal is changing because then there's no current flowing through the resistor if it's going up or down. The second most would be the, the AC termination because the AC termination, again, it's only the resistor has own current flowing through it only when the circuit is changing when the uh, level of the, of the signal is changing. The difficulty there is it's harder to design those AC, AC current terminations because of possible resonances between the capacitor and the inductance of the trace. Why would AC trace termination permit wider frequency range? Well, put one thing with AC termination, because of the choice of the capacitor and the resistor, can be different with different. You can then take into account the, the frequency range of the termination. In other words, a straight resistor termination is going to have the same, pre, is going to be, you know, only be dependent on the frequency ranges of the transmission line and the length of the transmission line. But the uh, AC termination allows you to add an additional tuning capability to that, which gives you more frequency response capabilities. Ernie, this question is uh, for your demo. Uh, can the receiver yes. impedance be modeled as an open high impedance termination? Yes. In fact, that's pretty close to what it's modeled as, you know, at, in any case. It, it's a, it is, it, the receiver is then generally high impedance. And so the results, if I put, a, put an open circuit there, model would not be too much different than what we saw before. Um, and to add that, to that, um, yes. this is, they also asked, this is why when the signal reaches the receiver, it reflects back and effectively doubles the voltage? That's correct. And so in other words, we, we match the termination resistance you know, the, the, the output impedance of the driver plus the termination resistance is matching the impedance of the, term, of the transmission line. Therefore, the reflection coefficient is, what is, is a half. So it exactly doubles the, the voltage on the receiver. And then when that, when that signal goes back, it now matches the termination resistor so that all the energy is, in, is dissipated in the termination resistor on the bounce back. And so therefore you don't get any bouncing, but you don't get another bounce off the transmission of the uh, ter transmitter. Good question. Are power planes considered reference layers? Yes, so the power plane, it is the reference layer. That, that's another discussion we could have in terms of return current. Uh, one of the things that happens in the pictures that we do, we're always looking at the signal going out through the, you know, the driver, through the transmission line to the receiver. But in reality, the current has to come back from the receiver to the dryer somewhere. And that, come, that current comes back from a reference plane. And so it's very important to look at the, at the return path. In other words, for high-speed circuits, the return path should be a, a reference plane right below the trace. So, so there isn't any impedance added by the return current having to go somewhere else. This is, this is one of the reasons why the vias uh, can have an effect. If you, if you change layers, you're, you're... Why should the series resistor be close to the transmitter? 
What is the reason in terms of SI? It's because you have problems, okay, it's more likely to cause kind of resonance problems. So in general, general practice is to put it close to the transmitter. And it turns out that when we use on dye transmission like that, it's very close. And so it's really satisfying that. If it isn't close, then you can have other, other issues happening before you get to your termination in the, in, the, in the transmission lines. And the VIA, remember, this is also going through a VIA. Can we use Aurora for a PCB made in Altium? How? Aurora itself is designed to be within the Arcad Allegro layout tools. We have, we have a similar simulation packages for Altium. The difference is the problem with resistor, and then you have to go back to your layout tool to fix one of the problems. But we have the same set of analysis tools available for uh, use with Altium designs. If the receiver's input impedance already matches transmission line impedance and driver output impedance, then why is termination still needed? If the receiver impedance receiver impedance matches the transmission line impedance, then effectively you're doing what is the equivalent of a parallel termination. And that you've got to the, to the actual signal. Not that. It, in other words, you're kind of asking whether you could do on die parallel termination, which you can, for example, address lines are one of the examples where you might do on die. But if it, if it's a multi-drop address, in one piece unless you the receive it. So thank you for answering that. Uh, it looks like that's it for the QA portion of the webinar. So I want to thank everyone again for joining today's webinar and our presenters on today's topic. However, if anyone has questions that were not addressed during the webinar, we will be following up with you on an individual basis. I'll be closing the webinar now and we will be sending everyone a recorded version of today's webinar with the slide deck in the next few days. Thank you again for taking the time to join us today.